true or false. Witching Watcher versus the true cross-body unity no occult. Pure relationship respect. You know, the Lord said, don't take it personally, take it prophetically. If you come across things that hurt people and hurt going to church, in my good, you know, hurting Jesus' name. If it's three times or more the same thing in different places, that's God's sign. The Lord told me through the years that he sees a lot of it and that I'm to address it and, and teach on it, so that's what I'm doing. Well, I found out that when I had lost my father and I had great pain in the state I li used to live in where I discovered the spirit of prophecy, I had relocated out to another area where I had been involved in the city with a lot of people of quality. So then when I had moved to the county, I was in a state of growing violence, domestic violence, abuse, the silent treatment. And I'm a very kind person and very easily to deal with, but it was like a, a really big deal. And so I had nobody. My dad had died. My mother and sister had moved to Tulsa to go to the Bible training center up there. And I had been in ministry, my own ministry, since the 80s. This is the 90s. But I had two children, and I had nowhere to really go that got that, that I could talk to and let them know. I would try to tell what I felt were like friends, board member type people that were excellent people, but they didn't even think it was, they didn't get it. So there are many people, I want to let you know, these people are out there going through stuff and they need to go to church. They want to go to church to get away from it like I used to. And that's where this prophetic victim speak, the victim prophetic will read you and read me, try to read my mind. It was so horrible. It's just, it's like a us against them, paranoid. I have literally traveled during the years, and the only time I've ever had any type of issue with any kind of Christian group, any kind of mystery, any accusation, if that doctrine is in the, the Levitical patriarchism, which I named Welp, which is shepherding mixed up with witch occult and turf protecting. And because I'm a decent person, I will not name their group or put a picture up, make a TMZ video and earn money off of it, but I will heighten the call for them to be delivered. I will teach on it and instruct because I didn't realize it because I'm a strong person. See, this is it. A lot of us are senior offices. We're just not famous and we get accused. A lot of us mothers in Christ, sisters in Christ, and fathers in Christ may not look your style, may not look your color, your gender, your energy, but whatever it is, this group, the occult, think they know more. They think they know more than all of us, and they don't know because they have never even gotten out of their perch, down from their mountain, <laughs> to deal with real people. And I have my call is real people, I is real people. And I'm also very respectful, and I don't go on reading people's energy. I'm still a Baptist at heart, a happy camper, a Methodist type of Africa, like Eric. I, I'll relate to you like Jesus did. I believe in the old-fashioned way. You, you smile at people, you talk to them, you try to be open if they want to talk to you. I am. So I've had to get so strong just to survive <laughs> and be here today with all the private, personal, and on top of that, unsafe dysfunction in groups when you really need to take off, and there you are mellow. But it's usually not the very top person, the founder, because they're not out with it. We are representing visitors that get targeted. The targeted non-famous person who's a five-fold office, they can't recognize an Elijah from a witch in there. So I'm making it big and bold and frank so that, you, that the training will be different. Seer theology. This is the prophetic seer realm. My mother, her mother, the family trait, my father, even though they're Baptists and Presbyterians, non-tongue talkers, my aunt, all of us have this seer, as in prayer warrior, have a ability to hear from the Holy Spirit, you know? Anybody does. There are tons of people that don't speak in tongues that do that. I speak in tongues now, but that family trait was always, boo, my grandmother 
always prayed and the Lord would lead her and say move and we would be that's how it is with most Christians with a relationship but it was nothing difficult it wasn't used to be prurient to spy to have to go into the occult and try to read their mind to dig out the worst you know are they in sin are they coming to take us over are they a witch you know in other words, it's sort of like uh it's sort of like enthroning, I call it enthroning Jezebel, where they give, they built it up in their minds, <laughs> they built it up in their little ministry minds that we are the, we are the ones that everybody wants to take our turf and we better huddle together and get in the occult and use false authority. So it's witchcraft, plain old witchcraft. But I was not raised around it. I can talk about it, but I will say it as it is, let's put it down, it's abuse. It's occult, it's witchcraft, it is aggressive, it is targeting, and I know it, God allowed the grace. It is defiling, it is harassment, it harasses me. I was, I, I can tell you, if I had a longer tape, I would, but um, I can tell you the times when I was at my most suffering, private suffering, a strong person, I don't let it out, but I'm with the Lord, people know there are two sides to life. I would be lose. I lost my mate. I lost family members. I had all this stuff. The abuse at one point, tra tragedy. And then you lay down your life, tried to forgive everybody, tried to keep joyful, and you, you do your job, and you go to church, and you go, thinking now I get to be with Jesus. Time off, and they are a cult, a cult or occult, and their people get triggered when you the LP Levitical patriarchy <laughs> you trigger them for walking in and sitting down calmly that is what we this has been the anathema this has been the shock why all I know is I have a new move and they're not used to it and I'm not a controller and <laughs> they are <laughs> but it's a spiritual warfare plus these people that accuse are indifferent they're like enmeshed in their own selves self-absorbed, indifferent, ornery, you know, like protective, it's a cult spirit, so I can <laughs> give you vocabulary. <laughs> I've been cult watched. I, can, I trigger cult watching. I'm the litmus test. So if you need me to go in there and proof your, proof your group, <laughs> if you're prophetic, and let you know if it's in there, the false religion, just bite me over. But I for, I'm not mad at them. I'm not mad at the humans, but I can see they have really a need of repentance and cleaning this up. This is not about me. I'm doing this on behalf of Jesus to make his house safe, to make it, to redig the wells of the Holy Spirit. This is big boss that believe they own, they know more. The occult think they know, they've arrived, they are the ones that only they know, but I, see, through this spirit through the years back in the 90s when I realized I triggered it on my travels around America I read them back I thought all right I'm just when I get read and I get scanned and divine I'll know it by grace and I'll start watching them that's my sign I better watch out I better study their doctrine their lifestyle their race their politics their beliefs their friends you know how they act with people are they diverse that's how I got all this just time as discernment comes with reason of use. I've had plenty of reason. So we don't want to scare people off, but I would say be very careful. If those people are so cold, they devalue strangers. A mother in Christ, now an older person, wow, who are these people? Are they really true Christians? Are they false prophets, false accusers, mind readers, false religion? Whoa, they are Isaiah 5.20 calling good evil and evil good. Read that chapter 1 through 10 of Isaiah. That explains it. Forgive them, but not of them. God bless you.